Thanks to our viewers for joining us this Saturday evening. I'm Karaga Bodwins and we're coming to you live from the Kampala Serena International Conference Center. Indeed, as you're there, seated in your hotel, or at your home, or anywhere else, definitely there's an issue about business. And we have an environment that is trying to be enhanced on how to make sure that there's proper registration, there's proper sustainability of businesses. But with URSB as our partner in this particular discussion we're going to have, we are asking ourselves, what do you do after you've registered your business? Before we go into a live discussion, please let's have this preface and then we'll be right back. According to Lean Methods Group, a research institute, it observes that the business world faces the following challenges in every continent all over the world. They are uncertainty, globalization threats, cash flow constraints, excessive government policy and regulation, technological volatility, market complexities, plus supply chains and strategic thinking problems. Every year, the world awaits a report on the ease of doing business from the World Bank, a ranking index of countries on how best they make registering, starting and doing a business. This ranking is an important indicator for prospective investors to use in deciding where to invest. Recently, export.gov, a United States web portal platform that supports its citizens and business companies in investment exportation decision making, made a statement about Uganda's business environment. It states several challenges its companies face in Uganda which include high levels of bureaucratic corruption, land-related fraud and corruption, infrastructure connectivity deficiencies, especially in the rural areas. The statement continues to assert that there is a lack of specialized skills in accordance with UNDP's 2018 Human Development Index, which ranked Uganda 162nd out of 189 countries. Then the statement cites inefficient government services considering the World Bank's 2018 Doing Business report, which ranked Uganda 127 out of 190 countries, seven positions lower than the previous year. Uganda ranked below the average for Sub-Saharan Africa in multiple evaluation categories. One of the key institutions in Uganda that deals with business environment governance, enablement and enhancement is the Uganda Registration Services Bureau. It is mandated under the Uganda Registration Services Bureau Act, CAP 210, to register all business entities in Uganda which are required by law to be registered. Nonetheless, the Bureau also holds the responsibility of post-registration monitoring and interface with these businesses expected to ensure that there is an effective and business-friendly environment right from registration, gestation and maturation. With this responsibility, the Uganda Registration Services Bureau, URSB, in conjunction with NTV, have found it pertinent to have a comprehensive discussion about the onus that falls on business companies in the country to deliberately be compliant in its post-registration phase with the Bureau as a way of ensuring a better business environment and sustainability. You're welcome. Thanks for being uh, very prominent and wonderful viewers and for keeping us as your number on station. I'm Karaga Bodins once again. And if you're a business person out there or you are intending to run business, please, this is a very critical discussion for you. And go on our social media handles and follow us on this particular discussion and give us your correspondence about the topic. Right now, let me introduce my prolific panel of experts in this particular area from the Uganda Registration Services Bureau. Uh, representing they, uh, their registration department. And uh, in the middle, just right here on my left, I have Fiona Baiga, the Director of Business Registration, URSB. Fiona, you're welcome. Thank you, Bodens. Mm -hmm. Good evening, viewers. You're welcome. And uh, Robert Mugabe, very interesting name, the Manager of Business Registration, URSB. Robert, you're welcome. Thank you. I Good hope evening. you understand how fascinating and <laughs> interesting your name is. <laughs> I, I do. <laughs> All right. So let me start yes. with Fiona. Mm -hmm. You know, your core business is, especially in the area of registration, is uh, to make sure that you register businesses 
uh, which of course supplementary to that, you have civil registration, you have liquidation uh, management, intellectual property registration, and uh, you register public and private companies, you register foreign companies. So somebody, even just by the title of your name, Uganda Registration Services Bureau, they would expect that the relationship with the business stops at registration. Why in this case, as we're talking about post-business registration, do you have to stretch your relationship after registration? Uh, Baldwin, it is true that uh, we have the mandate to register businesses mm -hmm. and uh, legitimize the operation, operationalization. <clears throat> um, and that indeed is the beginning of our relationship. Uh, because in registering the business we are creating, we're giving birth to a legal person. And uh, like persons, uh, legal persons also start out as babies. So we have helped to birth this entity. It is a baby and we cannot, as responsible parents, mm -hmm. leave it uh, without uh, ensuring that it grows to be uh, an, um, a healthy and a responsible citizen and contributor to the country and community. So our role is to guide this new baby to if, we, if it needs to take it for immunization, we will, and to make sure that they, it grows. And part of that involves uh, doing this uh, post-registration compliance. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, um, the mandate that we have to register the business is uh, under a law called the Companies Act. And the company also compels the businesses to do post-registration, uh, uh, post-incorporation registrations. And also, not only that, but the relationship that the company will have with third parties will also put them in a position where they have to do this. For example, your contractors, you may need certain documentation that you have to present to them. If you want to bid for a, doc for, for a work, for example, with the PPDA to get on their list of providers, uh, your bankers will require you to have some of these uh, uh, registrations done post-incorporation. So uh, we, our role is there to nurture mm -hmm. and to look after this child, that it grows to maturity. And like you explained, part of our role is also to look after these companies when they are in dire straits or when they want to, to, to dissolve. Mm -hmm. So yes. Okay, so mm -hmm. you're trying to make sure that uh, you avoid this uh, statistic, very sad statistic that uh, companies die uh, pretty easily, especially in their first year. Do, do you think that particular responsibility helps to assuage that difficulty? We are convinced that it does and that if uh, companies do listen or reach out for our help, seek for our help, we can work together to ensure that they don't become a statistic. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, Robert Mugabe. Yes, yes. Uh, very interesting political name in the international scope. So you you, you have the, the um, her articulation of the fact that this is a legal requirement uh, because of the act, which is the, the, the registration act, uh, which is uh, demanding that uh, you have companies registered, you have them making reports on the proceedings of their meetings and everything. Uh, so is this across the board on all companies of all forms, small, medium, and big, or public listed companies? And uh, is there a cost to this? Uh, thank you. There is a cost, mm -hmm. but not all the time. Mm -hmm. I would say some companies do not necessarily have to carry a cost. Mm -hmm. For instance, you can easily get the forms you require to do the post-registration mm -hmm. are actually free with the Uganda Registration Services Bureau. So our, if you want to access them, you can access them from our portal, from the premises, our registration premises, both at the head office and regional centers. We actually have these forms, so I could say that they are free, the mm -hmm. preliminary part of it. However, mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to the registration fees, these uh, entities bear the cost. It is a small cost, it's not mm -hmm. so, I'm sure, uh, 20,000 for a resolution could be your breakfast, you in particular, but uh, <laughs> I know it's not so costly. Uh, yes, yeah. so uh, this be, because you're talking about yeah. the people who are struggling and mm. they want to break out of the briefcase uh, business arrangement, mm. then, and definitely somebody would wonder why do I need to have a continuous payment of 
of these small monies mm. for those post producers. That's what I'm asking. And uh, it's quite a substantial amount that if you're, cause you're, you're saying in 2017, 2018 report of your performance, you they are about 49,000, literally about 50,000 uh, companies that have been registered. Then you have legal documents, which is like uh, powers of attorney, deeds, constitutions, 38,000 registered. So if you multiply it with 20,000, you're making quite a hefty sum. Interesting, when you aggregate, <laughs> you, when you yeah. aggregate, it becomes some reasonable amount, mm. but which goes to government coffers to help us also get other infrastructure like uh, hospital, like good roads. But uh, away from that, going back to, <laughs> to, to the entities that face this, yeah. uh, we, we have basically <coughs> two groups of companies, or I mean of, and of uh, businesses. We have business names, and uh, business names only deal with changes in particulars. At registration, you are born. Uh, in the case you do any changes, uh, you end up coming to report to us that, you know, it's no longer uh, this address, it's no longer uh, this partner, there is a new partner. So business names fill that form, uh, which is simply changing the particulars. But uh, for companies, it stretches from company decisions uh, to shareholders, mm -hmm. to directorship, all of that has to be informed uh, and the, the registrar of companies has to get that feedback mm -hmm. because the, it helps tomorrow when there is an investor who thinks that uh, your business is uh, something nice, very attractive. This investor relies on this information from the URSB to partner with you. Mm -hmm. So a, a small business, the one we are calling small, it can actually grow mm -hmm. from nowhere just from a decision taken by a potential investor by looking at these records. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's true we have uh, small businesses that do not necessarily uh, file or so many documents apart from changes in particulars, address, proprietorship, uh, and nature of business. But for the companies, uh, in a smaller language, normal language, Ugandan language, you would say a company is slightly bigger than a business name. Mm. So the company has a bigger onus. The company's act says, please, when you are done with registration, uh, 14 days down the road, inform us of the address, mm -hmm. give us your directors. Uh, if you have uh, given shares to the members, give us a return of allotment. Uh, at the end of the year, file a, 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 an annual return to give us status of what you are doing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, basically And we want to dig deeper into all yes. those particular specifications. Mm -hmm. And uh, Fiona, now definitely when you look at what he's saying, and uh, uh, the person on the other side who feels that um, there is too much government interference or perhaps burden requirement on businesses, which is perhaps increasing the cost and worsening the ease of doing business in the country. And, and so this URSB requirement is also kind of an added burden on the business uh, because you're asking for registration of those documents, company resolutions, company forms, stamp duty on transfer of shares, registration of transfer of shares, of course that's on bigger public listed companies, you know, powers of button. And you, the person is keep, keeps on trotting from office, is reporting to your URA, reporting to KCCA, then has to report to URSB. Do you think that is really of any uh, sensible help to the betterment of the business environment in the country? Thank you, Baldwin. I'll start with your last uh, comment. Mm -hmm. um, in order to provide ease of doing business um, for the ordinary man on the street, we have what we call a one-stop center on level one of uh, URSB. And uh, you will not find that scenario of somebody now having to go to URA and KCCA because we do have uh, representatives of those authorities on that level. So you can uh, open your, your, your company, have it registered, go to the URA, get your TIN, and then go to KCCA and do your license, go to NIRA and get your registration of births. In oh, one location? Yes, in Where one exactly? location. Exactly on exactly? level one mm -hmm. of uh, our offices, which is on Georgia House, on George Street, Plot 15, Kampala. Mm -hmm. So that we are working towards uh, easing the... Uh, improving the, e the ease of doing business in, in Uganda. But in, in terms of um, requiring them to register, we are not worsening the, pro the problem. Actually, it is for purposes of helping or providing a guidance in how they manage their businesses, how they manage their companies, and ensuring that there is uh, corporate governance. So 
because the law requires them to do certain things, we are there just to uh, help them and say, look, uh, you need to file this within this time frame. You need this. This helps them in future. It's not for our benefit. Mm -hmm. It's for their benefit when they are dealing with third parties, when they are dealing with their own work, what they need to do. If these things are not in place, if you don't have a clean house, then when trouble comes, you know, you'll be in problems. So we are not actually making it worse for them. Mm -hmm. We're working towards improving their, their governance, mm -hmm. improving how they do business. Okay. Mm -hmm. I hope they're convinced in that <laughs> regard. So when we get back out of the break we're going to have, we'll talk about the specifics. Any returns, shareholding, meetings, and uh, resolutions. Okay. So our viewer, thanks for keeping with us. Let's go for a break, and then we'll be right back and delve much deeper into this discussion. Thank you for following this discussion. I'm Karaga Bodrins, and once again, I uh, just notify you that we are coming from the Campus International Conference Center. And uh, we are talking about post business registration uh, phase as when you have had an interface with the Uganda Registration Services Bureau. What is the relationship between you and that bureau? Uh, on in the uh, Companies Act 2012, Section uh, 132, it gives you, it gives an instruction in that particular act, and it says that there's a form of annual return of a company having a share capital, and uh, you need to specify the address every other time as you're indicating the annual return situation of registers of members and debenture holders, summary of capital share, rather share capital and debentures, particulars of indebtedness, current members. And Robert, somebody asks themselves if they are there running a business, what is the essence of this whole filing? Isn't it a waste of time for <laughs> the person doing this? And, and why these specifications? And why annually? Can't it be stretched maybe to a longer period than this? Thank you. <laughs> it's not a waste of time. Mm -hmm. It is actually, I would say an annual return is simply one of those things you need to uh, give back to your SB uh, annually. Now, uh, an annual return is simply a status update of a company. You can imagine a year ago you registered the company. Possibly you were based at Sewandega. Today you've moved it to Bokoto. And you know, if your address remains updated with the register of companies, it means tomorrow if your potential suppliers or business uh, partners look for you, they actually can't get you. So an annual return, the information it has is information which is like a summary of about you. Uh, but that is very uh, subjective because I have a relationship with my suppliers and my business uh, conduct is really my business. So how does you having the information update about my location, about the members in my company, really help the supplier or the extra people that are engaged in my business? It, it doesn't sound compellingly persuasive of why you require those annual returns. Interestingly, you see there are people whom you have relationships with one-on-one, -on -one, mm. but there are people out there who are looking for business partners. Um, not to speak for uh, Uganda Investment Authority, but I know they have an investment uh, support forum. Mm. Now, if a person is, say, from Middle East or uh, anywhere outside Uganda, and they are looking for business, for a business partner, they won't look for you because they don't know you. They actually have to look for a regulator, mm -hmm. and that is URSB. So you'll find that URSB has the information that any other potential business partner outside Uganda mm -hmm. needs to look at mm -hmm. in the process of identification of uh, local uh, partners. So actually, away from the contacts we've made, mm -hmm. away from having met me today and we become business partners, there is someone else who could be outside there looking for information. Mm. So this information on the annual return is very, very critical mm. 
to this particular person, to the regulator. Tomorrow, you could be having uh, something to do with, say, um, PPDA. Mm -hmm. Maybe you are trying to, to bid for supply or any, uh, anything to do with the bidding. Now, you, P PPDA will need to first confirm, is it true that uh, what uh, Mugabe is talking about, his company is right? Mm -hmm. So the third eye from RSB is what will save you. Mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the oil industry now, I think there is a database to do with the suppliers in the oil industry. Now, you want to go there unless you have your business with RSB in order and the oil industry is like, oh my God, this is a good businessman, this is a good business lady. So to supply, even if it is uh, catering services, even if it is transport, you will need to first be able to update your record such that everybody can see that well, when we need him, mm -hmm. he is based at one area or Bukoto. If we need him, the director is so and so, has changed or has not changed. Mm -hmm. If we also need them, uh, <coughs> the, the, there has been a resolution confirming that, okay, we can get into this business. Mm -hmm. So annual returns are very good because they are a summary mm -hmm. of who you are. They also actually give an indication of how you are doing financially because there is a component to do with accounts. Mm. And uh, in the process, by the way, it helps you to keep your books very well. <laughs> so it, there is a comparison which is innocent but in your interest that comes with filing of annual returns. And I can actually say that those who have been uh, able to be up to date, they are <laughs> doing wonders. Whenever you go to any in the process of bidding, nobody's asking you, but what about this? Mm -hmm. I mean, your story is clear. It's like a clean man. I'm <laughs> sure you have had <laughs> around here when they say, ah, that one, that big man is innocent. We have not had any bad record about the person. Mm -hmm. So the same applies to an annual return. When you do it very well, it is an indication of how clean you are mm -hmm. as an entity, how you are ready to do business, how you are attractive to potential partners. Mm -hmm. And uh, business, business growth starts from there. Mm -hmm. It is a reflection of good practices that now sell you to the outside world mm -hmm. for business. Okay. Uh, d d d I was going to ask about the disclosure uh, protections. For instance, if, is that information, if I'm a private company, is that information tradable to anyone without my consent? Or like, for instance, if someone else wants to see that information, are they a permitted to do that without my consent being given? Uh, it's an interesting one. Just statistics, <laughs> yes, because I get yeah, it's to... It's an interesting one. Uh, and, uh, I mean, uh, records, business mm -hmm. records, which are with the Uganda Education Services Bureau, are actually public records. Okay. Uh, that's why you will find it very easy for if, if these are investigative bodies, they will be able to pass by and see, is it true, is this one there? If it's a business person who is saying, I met uh, Madame Fiona, mm -hmm. she said she does business in Goro. <coughs> mm -hmm and I want to pattern with her, they will come running to us to see, is it true that she, does, she deals in gold? Mm -hmm. How is her paperwork? Uh, so it's a public uh, record that can be accessed by whoever is interested but with good intentions. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, the, the company that should be worrying is if I had the intentions of competing with you or of um, in any way managing you yes. and then I access. Mm -hmm. But uh, normally you, you, you access on a request and the request is always clear and in a good interest. Okay, uh, quite a challenging area because <laughs> that for me can be interpreted as something that can re be repellent to people if they know that you're going to share the information without their consent. But perhaps you will clear that out okay. later. Yeah. Fiona, mm -hmm. so of course in that same particular act, the Companies Act 2012, uh, mm -hmm. Section 150, talks about require, it requires a printed copy of every resolution or agreement to which the section applies and within 30 days after the passing or making of the resolutions argument to be delivered to the registrar. Um, this sounds petty. Why, for my decision I've made as a board and made a resolution, should I have it registered with you? And now with a tricky element of him saying that you can have your information exposed, I'm uh, thinking I doctor the information. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yes. So what is the justification? And you have to pay 20000 every re resolution that you make. Yes. Well, companies uh, work through meetings. They make decisions uh, arise from the meetings. And uh, these decisions are translated into what we call a resolution, which is a written documentation describing that action that is, say, authorized by a board of directors. Now, like you said, the law requires that these be registered. Now, Baldwin's, you can choose not to register your resolution. Mm -hmm. Problem is, you will not be able to rely on it for the purposes for which you made it. 
For example, if it's a resolution to open a bank account, uh, you can come up with a resolution, draw it up, and take it to the bank. The bank will compel you to register it. Why? Because they will not rely on it if it's not registered, because that's what the law provides. Mm -hmm. So that so for it to be binding, for that resolution to be binding both on uh, on the, the directors, the company, but also for third parties that will rely on that resolution, it has to be registered. Yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. it's for purposes of legal business uh, relationships. Yes. The banks have been compelled that they should not accept such <laughs> 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 <They have, laughs> uh, Well, I'm not sure they've been well, compelled. Well, of course, it's all law. This um, company's act is quite an intricate. It's the volume of about 240. Yes. Pages, but yes. But it's also in the interest of the of the company itself. It may, for its purposes, for it to be able to to rely on that that resolution, for example, for for actions, or even if it were in court, it needs to have been re registered. So those are yeah. board directorate decisions uh, or mm -hmm. written decisions out of meetings, not necessarily yes. any kind of company meeting uh, decisions that are made that you have to bring and register implying that perhaps there are certain decisions or mm. meeting outcomes that are specific to be registered for, not that every resolution that is made is no, registered. Uh, yes, for instance, uh, if you resolve that uh, you're changing uh, the, 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 the guard who's, <laughs> you're changing your night guard, you know, that, that needn't be registered or you, you want somebody else to do something. There are some resolutions that uh, when you don't have to register. I mean, every decision that you make in a, in, a, in a meeting doesn't have to be registered. But there are those that touch on uh, your relationship with other people. There are things that you need to be, d to be done and the law requires that those the be The composition of the company, yes. the, the composition of shareholders. Okay. There, there's a lot mm -hmm. that, that you can be looking at. Are you transferring shares? Are you changing directors? Are you, are you increasing your, 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 your shareholding? Are you filing allotments? I, do you want to open a bank account? Do you want to appoint somebody something? Do you want to give powers of attorney to somebody? All those are things that uh, touch on the on the on the company to mm. a great degree and they really must powers be. of attorney is, uh, mm. is transferring your powers shareholders powers of attorney would mean that are you <coughs> giving for example Baldwin you and I are in a company together mm. uh, but I'm uh, I'm not in the country and I'd like for you to bid for example or and then I give you powers of attorney say to to sign on my behalf or to do something on behalf of the company. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that has to be certified. By that the has to, there the must be a resolution to that effect. Okay. And then you must register the power of attorney as well. Okay, yeah, interesting. So uh, on that note, still just on the specificities of the things that are supposed to be returned. Still you know, on that very Companies Act, uh, Section 152, it requires that you provide a summary of uh, the minutes of proceedings of for for that particular company and the directors, not necessarily just the resolutions, but the meetings. And still, m my drawback is that I feel this is petty, asking that every company shall cause minutes of all proceedings of general meetings and of all proceedings at meetings of its directors to be entered in books kept for the purpose. And uh, so, what is why should this be really uh, required? Don't you think it's just overwhelming? the reporting correspondence <laughs> maybe for starters we need to uh, appreciate that a company is actually a person but this time a legal person so the people working in the company are not necessarily the, no, the, the company they, the company they, is excluded exactly the company employs the people mm. employs the people it has shareholders but in uh, law it's independent of the owners and the only way a company can speak mm. is through meetings that's why we have such study meetings now uh, spelled out by under the Companies Act. Mm -hmm. It's because as a company, you are expected to manage business. You are expected to have decisions, but mm -hmm. they must only come through uh, company meetings, which are now those statutory uh, meetings. Mm -hmm. So it is important because you can statutory imagine... Statutory means they're actually required we, by law. Exactly. exactly. Okay. Statutory. That's coming from the statute. Yes, from the statute. Uh, yeah. So these are meetings, not casual <coughs> meetings, ad hoc meetings, but meetings where the law says after uh, cooperation, uh, maybe within 
uh, six months or within uh, one month, you will need to sit and uh, have a meeting. For instance, the Companies Act will tell you that you have to have a meeting of members, which they normally call annual general meeting. So that, those are some of the mm. examples of statutory meetings. So all the proceedings from that uh, annual general meeting uh, to, to exemplify yes. are supposed to be communicated to your RSB. Now, the, 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 it's not that the entire proceeding, <laughs> but yeah. rather key decisions. the key decisions mm. within the proceedings, mm. like we've said, this is simply a, a proceeding which is actually in the interest of the company. So the company has agreed, for instance, to move from location A to location B. The company has agreed to increase share capital. The company has agreed maybe to admit new members. So those are some of the things you'll be seeing. Mm -hmm. The decisions that are critical to the running, the survivability of the company, mm -hmm. will have to be extracted from the minutes and registered with the registrar of companies. Mm -hmm. And like uh, uh, Madam Fiona has said, registration serves evidential purpose. Mm -hmm. Once you have registered your resolution, it's on record and for evidential reasons, you, all purposes, you'll be able to adduce it in the court for evidential reasons and uh, you move on. Mm. So statutory meetings make decisions which are key to a mm. company. Yeah. And there is no way the company will say, we sat and met. Mm. No, there has to be a record <laughs> which has been presented. It's in the interest of the company. Yes. yes. But, but yeah. I, I hope there's a verification uh, mechanism because mm. we can concoct these resolutions <laughs> if we don't. But uh, let me not speculate <laughs> over that. So Fiona, mm. uh, just to understand, because my skepticism is that uh, people regard this as to be really petty requirements, very burdensome. Um, in justification on your part, give us the, the compliance state, uh, status mm -hmm. that are people really responding to these particular requirements and are you managing to have uh, proper flow and, and uh, response from these companies? Baldwin, I'm glad to say that uh, we have a <coughs> positive uh, response mm -hmm. uh, um, to, by the clients as far as post-registration is concerned. And this has, uh, we've seen an in, uh, increasing trajectory in compliance, particularly since we started doing cl uh, business clinics, mm -hmm. going out to, to, the, to the people and telling them about this. And uh, we are hoping that this will even improve much further when we uh, start the online filing of annual returns. Uh, we have put in place a system for that. We're just waiting to launch it. Yeah. Um, but uh, don't just take my word for it. Uh, I, uh, I have some figures here that mm -hmm. we might look at uh, for the week ending 18th of July. And I'll just give you a few. And this is only for the head office, mm -hmm. so at George Street. So in that week, we had uh, like new addresses that were registered, 298. We had allotment of shares, 898. We had amendments of companies, memorandum and articles, 47. Annual returns filed, 117 companies did that. And that's just in one week. Mm. So we can see that there's an increase in the, in the compliance by people and we're hoping that it will get even better. Mm -hmm. So they're not making this uh, compliance because they feel frightened that the uh, USB is going to come on their door and close their offices, but they understand the value and the, 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 the business uh, uh, competitive uh, advantage that it would put them in if they comply. Is that the, the truth? Do, do you feel people actually understand you or they're responding in fright that, uh, you know what, these guys can come and uh, look us up or cause this problem? I, I think they understand the need to to do the post uh, registration compliance i think they have most of them have have tested the benefit of having complied and most of them have fell, fallen victim mm -hmm. of for or not having complied so they are persuaded of the need to do this and they completely have no fear at all mm. <laughs> it's because they are persuaded yeah so yeah. one of you probably i think i just have at least a minute how do you authenticate the the truthfulness of these particular reports? Because, for instance, for resolutions, because I am afraid as a business person to give you the very true information picture of my company because maybe it might get me liable in some way, especially against my competitors or the state. 
I want, so the, if you are given information, that resolution, or perhaps the outcomes of meetings, or perhaps the reports that come from those particular resolutions, how do you authenticate that actually they are genuinely true? Uh, thank you. Uh, ordinarily, yes. Yes. Um, a company speaks through its officers. And uh, the company actually uh, gives obligations. If you are a director of a company, you are expected to do X, Y, Z, as in, in terms of management, you are expected to ensure that a, a true record of the company records is in place, mm -hmm. a true record of meetings is taking place, and it's an obligation in the law which, if you actually uh, alter, could land you into problems. Mm -hmm. And also, the other bit <coughs> is that these decisions or records are actually in the interest of the company. So uh, it appears there is no motivation from the users to alter the records. Okay, so you're trusting that uh, uh, we, we are trusting <laughs> them as, as officers <laughs> of the company uh -huh. with obligations spelled out under the company's act yes. and with an interest for growth of the company. Yes. Uh, we, we have, uh, for the time we have done this, we have not seen situations where people simply come out and simply say, uh, I have this much money when mm. actually there is less, yes. or too much when there is yes. less. There is uh, mm. uh, some genuineness from our users. Mm. They seem to understand that if I say the wrong things, I might miss a bigger deal. Mm. I'd say, I used the examples earlier of PPDA and the oil, oil uh, supply. Yes. The yeah. so, so there yeah. is something good about having a good record. And I think our users have appreciated it. We are lucky we don't have uh, a mechanism of going outside the, the office, closing people's shops. Mm -hmm. No, we are only able to <laughs> tell them that, by the way, <laughs> when yeah. you come, yeah. there is this benefit. And because people have been benefic benefiting out of this, mm. I mean, they have seen what we are saying. It is now an issue of one-on-one, uh, -on -one, as in a colleague will tell you that, ah, my company is compliant and I'm now doing very well, I'm able to bid, I'm, able to, I'm now a big person in business. Okay. So uh, the message moves like that. And All right. So on that note, I, regardless of my <laughs> com, uh, kind of uh, skepticism that I'm mm. expressing, let me go for a break, come, we we'll conclude over that, and uh, perhaps I'll air out more of my sentiments in, this in regard to that skepticism. Thank Thanks, our viewers. Let's go for a break, and we'll be right back to wrap up this. <laughs> So we're talking about post-business registration and compliance requirements that are under the law, especially the Companies Act 2012. And we are trying to delve through the various requirements for a business to make sure that it complies with, for it to be healthy, for it to be legally authentic and reliable. And according to that very Act, Section 72, you have the notice to the Registrar of Consolidation of Shares that then there needs to be a, a notice to the registrar of consolidation of share capital, conversion of shares into stock and related, related particulars. Of course, these are public listed companies, majorly. And if a company having a share capital has consolidated and divided its share capital into shares of a larger amount, that is existing shares, converted any shares into stock, reconverted stock into shares, all this has to be reported to the Registry of Companies, and which is definitely now under the docket of the Uganda Registration Services Bureau. And Robert, so essentially, uh, for mm -hmm. one to get to understand this intricacy of company control or oversight by you, why do I have to be required to report just this internal change of shareholding and perhaps even shareholders? Thank you. Uh, behind the company, they are actually shareholders, mm -hmm. and uh, these shareholders may change time and again. Mm -hmm. Now, you, could, you can imagine if uh, I registered the company. Shareholders, those are the owners. The owners of the company. Of the company. Yes. Uh, so if I registered the company, <coughs> say, about five months ago, and uh, we were three, so today we have maybe increased our share capital to reduce more shares, or one of us has sold off some of their shares, there could be 
a uh, possibility of someone getting on board. Mm -hmm. Now, you can imagine if there is a company whose original owners are known, but now the subsequent owners are not known. Now, if you have any dealings, how do you get to this new owner who is not known? Mm -hmm. There are even situations where the entire original membership gets out mm -hmm. and then new people come on board, especially through a transfer or mm -hmm. on a sale. They are through a sale. Mm -hmm. And uh, away from sale, there are even other operations of the law, like, uh, like uh, a person is deceased and then uh, their estate, uh, uh, the, admin, uh, the administrator or the holder of letters of probate comes on board. Mm -hmm. So th the whole essence is that when shareholding gets moved from one person to another, let the record be updated. Mm -hmm. Let the register of members be updated mm -hmm. so that the register of companies and any other potential user mm -hmm. I, I'm keeping on referring to the business people because <laughs> yes. that's where the interest is. Yes. This is a simple business person mm -hmm. who may get business partners and the business partners need, need to know mm -hmm. whom are we dealing with. If originally it was ABC, are we still, still doing, dealing with ABC mm -hmm. or there is now FG who have come on board. Mm -hmm. So it is important that <coughs> whenever you consolidate your shares or bring on board another person, mm -hmm. uh, whether through uh, increase in share capital that produces more shares. It's good that we inform the register of companies that we are now more or mm -hmm. we have become less. Mm -hmm. And also maintain uh, your register at your office mm -hmm. also clean. The, the record must be updated regularly. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah. that, that is mm -hmm. inclusive of these public listed companies because it's public listed companies. They go over 100 members. Mm -hmm. So all the time, that is one of the even for such companies, that is also required. That for whichever share is sold and whoever takes in you know, as a shareholder, that report is supposed to be submitted. Yes, companies, all companies must maintain a register of members. Yes. So even the whether you're small, yeah, as long as a shareholder. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, it does not matter the size because the principle is good governance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> governance that can be able to be tracked, not for any other purpose, but for purposes of evol evolving and growing in business. Mm. So all companies are required to have a register. Uh, if you are only 10 as a private company, it's okay. You are 10, you are between 1 to 100, so your register will be there. If there is any change, let it be known mm -hmm. for purposes of follow-up. Mm -hmm. Follow-up is a wide word. It could be following <laughs> up because we are serving you a good document, say, for business. Uh -huh. You are invited to participate in the in the, an international business forum where Uganda maybe has uh, has nominated you. Mm -hmm. You are the best uh, taxpayer possible of the year. You know that things which you are normally organizes. Mm -hmm. So I if you are in that category and you have to be served, yes. how do, whom do they serve? There must be <laughs> the particular, the particular person. Yes. And that individual could be the initial one mm -hmm. or the new people on board. Okay. Yes. All right. And uh, just uh, definitely we're concluding up. And uh, okay. Fiona, you need to help just uh, make a sale to the public out there to let them understand what the benefits would be for them to undergo this particular process of complying with you. Because you, you see, uh, I, I can list out the registration of documents is 20,000, company resolutions, 20,000, company forms, 20,000. You have a stamp duty on transfer of shares, 1.5% of amount being right. transferred. Registration of transfer of shares <coughs> are 20,000 plus. So there is a cost element. Definitely the other person who is bearing the cost needs to be persuaded on mm -hmm. exactly just about four in summary definitely because mm -hmm. I, I alluded to them earlier on. What does that company specifically benefit from getting this compliance besides the cost that it incurs? Thank you, Bob Dwayne. Um For starters, a company will be viewed as a going concern because and that will that way they will avoid deregistration because if a company has not filed anything, returns for five years or more, the law compels us to deregister it. Going concern implies is a continuing life of a company. Yes, it is alive. So if it doesn't <laughs> report, it implies it's some kind of fatality possibility. Yes, it uh, is, it's, mm. it's, it's sick or it's, it, it has died. And so, yeah, th it will avoid deregistration. Uh, of course, when it comes to... First of all, so you deregister the company if it doesn't make those particular return compliances? Yes. Wow. Okay. Five years or more of not filing returns, mm -hmm. um, the company we may be compelled to deregister de yeah, the company. Uh, the second one is that, of course, you, are, you have a clean house. So uh, who doesn't want to deal with an organized, clean 
house, um, the person will have an added advantage over the other companies, obviously. You have good governance in place, you have transparency, and uh, therefore that puts you in good stead with dealing with, uh, with uh, maybe your comp with the uh, clients or the general public. Um, you're also able to participate, say, in uh, bidding, in get, you're able to get loans easier if your house is in order, if your documents are in order, uh, and uh, that goes back to you having your directors registered, you have the changes made, if you have updating, you have annual returns, because believe you me, part of the, the, the work that, say, a bank would do mm -hmm. is uh, in knowing their customer, they'll come to find out... Uh, is From the registrar? Yes, does Bo mm -hmm. is Baldwin who he says he is? Does he actually own these shares? Does he have the authority to sign this loan? Does he have the authority to sign this uh, resolution? So it makes it easier for you. Yeah, many times uh, people's uh, monies have been held on account of the fact that their files have not been updated. So that, that makes it easier. Of course, communication, mm. if we know where to find you, if we know how to serve you, in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you mm. filed your, 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 your notice of situation of office mm. and uh, we know where to find you, certainly we won't say you're a briefcase mm. company. Yeah. Okay, uh, brilliant. I, I, I think it's quite a compelling package of uh, <laughs> the, the benefits in that regard. So, last word, Robert. The company is jamming, it, it is objecting to get this compliance. What are the consequences that it faces? But also, if you if the person feels just repelled by the burden, probably interpreting it as a burden of doing these correspondences, how do you encourage them to work with you to make sure that they get out of that particular lag and skepticism that they hold, but also the consequences that they face, besides what she said being deregistered? De uh, first of all, I would love to encourage our users, the business community, mm -hmm. not to fear this small cost. Yes. It's simply like uh, a child is born, you are saying that uh, outside it's cold, you put on two jackets. Mm. It may feel heavy, burdensome, but actually you are protected from the bigger picture, That's which cool. is the coldness. Mm. So I, I would first of all encourage our, our users, the business community, mm. to feel it very normal. It is a good, it's a small expense which may appear big on the face value for that moment, but the bigger picture is that you are preparing yourself for bigger things. Uh, Madame Fiona has taken you through the benefits. Mm. Uh, you one of the consequences, oh, of, one of, the consequences mm. of, them, of them. For instance, if you spend five years, mm. consecutive five years, mm. of non filing annual returns, mm. you are, the law says you should be struck off the register. Mm. Of course, nobody feels happy when a baby is gone mm. uh, prematurely. Five years, you've not filed any returns, and then we say close. Mm. No, we would rather say, please come and file returns so that we can live more, you can do business more. Mm. We, we don't want to say to, to see briefcase companies mm. come and go. No, we want them to grow. And most times, it's a lack of information. And that's why we are saying, here we are. You do this, do the other. We can guide you on how to do it so that actually you live longer. So mm -hmm. if you were to miss, you would easily fall in the category of those who have failed to comply for five consecutive year, uh, years, mm -hmm. and then you would, you would fall off the, the register. Mm -hmm. Of course, also if you don't do it, you can imagine like, uh, like uh, especially family businesses. Family businesses are businesses which are run by entirely the family. And in Uganda, most businesses are of that nature. A, a, a mom, a dad, they start a business, and if it's a mom, maybe the dad uh, does the other uh, work behind the scenes. If it is a dad, maybe the mom is trying to support. So you can see, there is a family business, but it has to grow from small mm -hmm. to something big. How does it grow? Yes. It grows by keeping good records, mm -hmm. it grows by uh, managing well, and then tomorrow it will grow from a small family business to something very big. Mm -hmm. And that's why how we shall be able to have wealth creation in the families. I, I, when you see the president talking about wealth creation, mm. it's not far-fetched. The, the, the more you support these small businesses, the more they are able mm. to attract financial accommodation, uh, to attract uh, additional businesses. Mm. The issue of bidding, you won't go there. Mm. You won't appear in, among suppliers when you're not compliant. But when you appear there, 
when you attract funding from the financial institutions or even the government, the government has support services, you are able to grow yourself. Okay. And in the process, uh, the family business mm -hmm. has become something big. Mm -hmm. I, I think we have one in Uganda. Of, uh, as an example, I think Mukwano was uh, originally a family business, but you can see how far it had gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am sure it is going to continue with its mm -hmm. life. So basically, those are the challenges. You, you, you don't comply, you miss on the bigger picture. It's okay. like if you don't eat, what happens? Mm -hmm. You definitely <laughs> ah, that's the whole point. <laughs> get closer to the grave. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks indeed. Mm. A very brilliant uh, contribution to this particular area of, uh, of the business life. Because people assume that once you have registered mm. and you're paying taxes, that is it. And um, with the justification you're giving, I think uh, <laughs> I'm agreeing with you. Please, all of us who have businesses and uh, intending to do that, let's comply. Thank and you. Robert Mugabe, a very prominent, uh, uh, lovely name uh, in the... <laughs> In the global <laughs> arena, <laughs> manager of business registration URSB and Fiona by God, the director business registration URSB. Lady and gentlemen, you've been prolific. Thank you, and I hope to see you again. Thank you. Thank you both. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. And Thank our you. viewers, we are grateful that you've kept us as your number one station logged on and being informed and dedicated in this particular realm of business and the environment that we are trying to enhance in this nation. Please continue being with us, and if you're there as a company or you're a government agency or ministry, come to talk to our general manager or our sales team or myself, and we'll give you a comprehensive package of this kind of discussion, and you will be greatly glad because you will be enhancing your nation. God bless. Keep locked on to NTV. I'm Karagawa.